Hi, I'm Adrian Sparks. I'm here at Baker Beach in San Francisco. Aloha, I'm Jimmy in Honolulu, Hawaii, saying hello to the viewers of Pink Planet. Hi, my name is Serge. We're in uh, Will Rogers Park Beach, and you're watching Pink Planet. I'm Bill Mantis, and you're watching a special edition of Pink Planet featuring some of the best gay beaches in North America, including some remote, exotic, and even notorious sun-drenched gay hotspots. Our first stop is Baker Beach, located only minutes from downtown San Francisco in sunny California. This is one of the best urban beaches in North America. Offering a spectacular view of the Golden Gate Bridge, Baker Beach is popular with all sorts of people, especially gay men, many of whom choose to go nude at the north end of the beach. One of the most tranquil, quiet, urban beaches I've ever been on. Um, just to give you a frame of reference, this looks very remote and kind of quiet, but I live in the Castro, which is in the heart of everything, and I drove here in 15 minutes. I've always heard about it. You can come out here, it's pretty relaxed. And actually, I'm playing hooky today. The boyfriend and I decided to come out, and it's actually, it's really chill. Like, there's all sorts of people out here all types of body types. I'm very comfortable, you know, being out here. Usually, I don't go nude, but today it's just, you know, it's just the environment makes it very easy to be naked and enjoy the water, the sun, hopefully get a good tan. You've got this great architectural beauty behind you. You've got just such a nice blend of architectural beauty and natural beauty. And, uh, you know, I think that you also have a um, neat diversity of people here, too. I like this beach because it's, it's, you know, it's got a whole different vibe between that side and this side. You've got your eccentric people over there, then this is a bit more of the family, kind of yuppie beach. People who want to be a little bit more normal. But if you want to see some interesting stuff and just be around more sort of open-minded, eccentric people, it's a place to be. If you want to tan naked, it's, it's pretty cool, pretty comfortable. No one's checking you out. For me, I get to feel like I'm sort of in the country. That's what I like about coming to the beach, actually. You don't have to look, you don't see any skyscrapers here or anything like that, and only the beautiful bridge. You get to, you get to have the, the bridge without the city. I love it. So, oh, yeah, sorry, you weren't supposed to know I was here. Our next fabulous gay beach is also located in sun-drenched California. We head south to Tinseltown to check it out. Getting to LA can be a lot of fun, especially if you have time on your hands. We recommend the drive between San Francisco and Los Angeles along the Pacific Coast Highway. So rent yourself a vehicle, preferably a convertible, and do the drive. You'll see some amazing sights. Considered one of the finest stretches of road in all of America, Highway 101 hugs the shores of the Pacific as it winds through mountainous terrain. This is a drive you should savor, with views of spectacular beaches, coastal towns, and national parks offering exciting detours all the way down the entire coastline. Southern California is blessed with endless miles of beautiful sandy beaches. But perhaps one of the prettiest is a gay beach. You'll find it on the shores of swanky Santa Monica, right off the famed Pacific Coast Highway. Just park in the lot of Will Rogers State Beach and walk south along the water. Pink, oh, pink, oh. 
This is the beach at Will Rogers State Park, commonly referred to as Ginger Rogers Beach because it's just so popular with gays and lesbians. Now, every part of this beach is absolutely beautiful, but if you're looking for the gay portion, just head to lifeguard station number 18. Another really simple indicator are the guys. No, really, when you reach a spot just crawling with cute boys, slick with lotion, working on their deep golden tans, congratulations, you found it. I live in New York, so I'm, I was born and raised in Europe, and uh, in Luxembourg, and uh, I've lived in New York since 98. I really, really love it, and some friends of mine um, told me, you know, as I came out here, Oh, you know, LA is shallow and it's, you know, you're not gonna like it, but you know what, I love it. The beach here is so much nicer than the Atlantic. You know, the sand and the ocean and, and, and the sun and everything. It's, I love it, I really love it. Yeah. People are pretty sort of, they're not aggressively, you know, making a point about their sexuality here. So it's, uh, it's kind of cool, you know. It's like even straight men in LA, Sometimes you think they're gay because they're so sort of like cool and laid back. People enjoy when they come to the beach and seeing all the nice bodies, feet and muscles <laughs> and all that nice. Yes, it's a good reason juicy. to come to the beach. <laughs> yeah, it's, not, it's beautiful. Well, this is the beach, they'll, they'll enjoy it. It's a beautiful, look at this, how long and wide and it's gorgeous. I mean, in Los Angeles, I mean, you can't go wrong. Another must-see beach is world-famous Venice Beach. Now, this isn't necessarily a gay beach, but it's got an anything-goes kind of attitude. So come, walk around, check out the sights. There's lots to see here. Considered one of Southern California's biggest tourist attractions, this world-famous stretch of beach has been immortalized in media. Yet, you're still unprepared for the spectacle that awaits you. Okay, this doesn't feel so right. Let me try the next one. California, just in general, is just more open. It's more livelier, like here, especially in LA and Venice Beach and stuff like that. It's more open than the rest of like the country. There's never a dull moment when you go walking around. There's always something to see, people to watch, street performers, shops. You're watching Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode. We're back with a whole lot more right after this. <laughs> when we come back, we explore Vancouver's world famous Wreck Beach. We're almost there now. And we're on the move to Maui's glorious little beach. The locals tell us that this is the most beautiful, fantastic, gay friendly beach in the world. Pink Planet is brought to you in part by Van City, proud partners with Vancouver's lesbian and gay community. Hey, you're watching Pink Planet. I'm James and you're at Wreck Beach. Hey, you're watching Pink Planet. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm at Wreck Beach and you're watching Pink Planet. Welcome back to Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode. Our next stop is Canada's famous Wreck Beach, a gay-friendly destination for sun worshippers from all over the world. Vancouver, BC's Wreck Beach is perhaps the best known nude beach in the world, justifiably since it's absolutely huge, stretching over six kilometers. Wreck Beach attracts people from all walks of life, and unlike other beaches where nudists can be found in one section, all of this beach is nude. A gay traveler's trip to Vancouver would not be complete without a stop right here at Wreck Beach. It's world famous. Getting here though is a little difficult. You need to get off Marine Drive and exit at Pacific Spirit Park. And what you have to look for is trail number seven. This is the gay area of the beach. And what you need to do is head down these steep stairs to find it. Pink, oh, pink, oh. 
While gay men can be found on all parts of Wreck Beach, the remote area south of Trail 6 tend to be populated exclusively by gay men. As you can see, it's a fair hike down to the beach. I made the mistake of wearing flip-flops. Comfortable hiking shoes may be a smarter choice. We're almost there now. It's just through here. Once you get to the bottom of the hill, you'll find an opening and of course lots of logs. But don't be discouraged, this isn't the actual beach. You need to keep heading right. It's just over there and that's where we're heading right now. Vancouver, Canada is about the people uh, for me and that's part of what the experience on the beach is. It's every age, every body shape, every, every type of, of person and everybody's cool. Just a, a really mellow great experience let your inhibitions down yeah. leave, leave your image leave your attitude at home kind of place so this is my first time and uh, um, I, I love it it's really beautiful very beautiful place it's hard to imagine this wouldn't appeal to everybody it's you know it's it's like Yosemite by the sea it's you know it's quite pretty and you know it smells right now it smells of cedar and, and marine and, and the gentle breeze and all that very peaceful. Wreck Beach is also a great place to meet people. The best part of this beach for me and an oasis here, this part of the beach, uh, it's, it's quite social. And I don't drink, so um, I don't go to clubs. I found the atmosphere kind of noisy and yeah. I'm not that generation. Down here I meet people from elsewhere and local people yeah. and I probably meet more gay people more uh, deeply here than I would ever in a bar. I think that's the best thing, it's the social and the sense of security that comes from one being physically isolated down a cliff and a designated gay area and yeah, clothing optional, it's sure. no holds barred here. Yeah. Absolutely. Time for a short break. More of Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode right after this. When we come back, we hook up in Maui's Little Beach. It's a nice secluded beach for us to come and socialize and meet and hang out. And we check out Bender Creek Beach at a gay campsite in Washington State. We were looking for a good camping site and Reddit was gay and they had um, an underwear party as well, which is quite exciting. I'm Bill Mantis and you're watching Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode. Our next destination was hard to find and difficult to get to, but well worth the effort. I'm talking about Maui's Little Beach. Pink, Pink, Pink Planet! Gay life on this small Pacific island is low key compared to the hustle and bustle of Waikiki on the much larger island of Oahu. Nevertheless, lots of members of the team make this a regular vacation destination because of the natural beauty, easygoing pace, and incredibly friendly residents. We're en route to Little Beach, and now locals tell us that this is the most beautiful, fantastic, gay-friendly beach in the world, and it's also clothing optional. Now, it's close to a town called McKenna, which is off the beaten path, so if you find it, uh, you're in luck, and you'll enjoy a really beautiful beach. Now, if you get lost along the way, don't worry about it, because you're surrounded by mountains on the one side and beautiful beaches on the other side. Not a bad place to get lost. We're gonna head over to Little Beach, that's in McKenna right here. Big beach, but you don't wanna go there, you wanna keep going. As far as directions are concerned, hit Big Beach and you turn right and head to the far end where the rocks are. Kind of a pathway, it's where the work starts. Actually, it's, it's quite steep, but um, it's kind of a clear path and lots of rocks to hold on to. 
Uh, you weren't to kidding about climbing a rock. <laughs> you'll totally appreciate the dip into the ocean when you get there. Oh my goodness. We lost our producer. John! 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 John. Come on, we're brewing up a hot face up here. John, over here. John's a little older. <laughs> John's a little older, Grandpa. so we've got to wait for him. Come on, Grandpa. Come on, we'll give you a hand. A little bit of a workout. But paradise, we're right down here. Thankfully, it's, it's downhill. Look at that. Okay, we're here. Little beach. Clothing optional. Uh, absolutely optional. <laughs> and the gayest part, at the far end. It's a nice secluded beach for us to come and socialize and meet and hang out and just relax. I like this beach because it's small. And so, I mean, there's not a lot of people here and the water's perfect to play in because you're kind of secluded. So, I mean, and it's not commercial. It's just, you gotta hike everything in, you gotta hike everything out. So it's definitely an effort to get here. We love Hawaiian Islands. So, I mean, this is our way of relaxing yeah. and just getting out of our day-to-day -day lives. Sitting on the beach for 10 days is our way of vacationing. Aside from soaking up sunshine and oh natural sights, Little Beach also offers gay travelers a chance to hook up. Whether it's a sensual massage in the sun or much more in these secluded trails at the far end. There's a whole trail back here where there's places to go and play and you know just going for a swim and saying hi to someone on the beach, everyone's real friendly. Is uh, Little Beach a great place to find someone to play with? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's a nice way to meet people because we don't have the, the, the bar scene here. I mean, we have one night a week pretty much and that's about it. We have anniversary parties, there's small dinner parties and barbecues, but this is the big social place for us to come and you know, meet the beach. Little, yeah. beach. Little Beach is so beautiful, you may be tempted to bring a memento home with you, like a lava rock or some sand. But just keep in mind that local folklore suggests that removing these items will bring you bad luck. So leave all the things that are supposed to be here, here, and just take a great picture. In fact, one local realtor has seen the effects of the curse firsthand. We understand from a very reliable source that if people remove items from Little Beach, it brings them bad luck. Is that true? Uh, it's not restricted to just Little Beach. It is anywhere on the island. Okay. People will take rocks and sand and get home and have a little bit of bad luck and send them back to me in the mail. I don't know why it's bad luck to take the rocks. I just know that at least two dozen times I have received a package in the mail just addressed to the front desk asking us to please return this to a certain beach. You're watching Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode. We're back with a whole lot more right after this. When we come back, we explore Bender Creek Beach, a gay campsite favorite. Hello, my name is Nico. My name is Frank. We're from The Hague, Netherlands, and you're watching Pink Planet. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to Bender Creek. This is Vince Morley. Okay, we're here at Bender, Bender Creek, Creek Beach, and, and you're, you're watching, watching Pink, Pink Planet. Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode continues in America's Northwest at an exclusive gay campground.
Located north of Seattle in the pristine Cascade foothills, Triangle Recreation Camp is a membership-owned and operated campground for gay and lesbian members. In operation now for close to 30 years, TRC owns an 80-acre parcel of land surrounded by National Forest Service land, providing a very safe and private environment for outdoorsy members of the team. This is me roughing it for Pink Planet, but on the other side of this river is the beach, so follow me. Hey girls, look at him! He's dreaming! One of the biggest draws here at the campground is the Bender Creek Beach where I'm standing right now. So throw your towel down against these smooth river rocks and listen to the sound of the Stillaguamish River rushing by. It's a clothing optional beach, so relax, have a good time, and prepare to make lots of friends. It was raining this weekend. Everybody was talking about how you have to see the beach. Why is this a fun uh, or a must-see if you are camping here? Well, this is... Um well, for a number of reasons. So it, besides the uh, nudity and the sunbathing and, and the camaraderie that goes on with the guys and, and the occasional gal, it's just uh, a lot of fun. The sun, you get the people who come out who are, express their artistic talents, as you can see some little rock sculptures popping up yeah, here and there. And absolutely. Just, just variety of different things. Sometimes on warmer days, you'll get guys that are go over and mud over on the other side and do mud baths and little saunas and stuff. And so it's just fun. Free and comfortable. Just be yourself. Be expressive. You know, not have to worry about the, uh, well, for a better word, the, the closet society. You know, you can't just go to a regular beach and be gay without someone you having feel a... much more self-conscious about what you were doing instead of just being able to relax. So it's like going to a regular beach, you know, not being as nice to reach over and touch your partner or something like that. Yeah, without some type of ocean in your hand. We are from The Hague, the Netherlands, and we are on our way from Vancouver to Portland and decided to stay here. We were looking for a good camping site and read that it was gay and they had um, an underwear party as well, which is quite exciting in the middle of the bush. Well, it's absolutely great here. We um, hiked at 10 miles today, went to the ice caves, and I think we were the only gays who were hiking 10 miles today. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's very open mind in Holland too, it's no problem. But it. it's bigger here, I think. You know? Yeah, I, th I think people um, gather around more than they do in Europe. And that's this edition of Pink Planet's Best Gay Beaches episode. I'm Bill Mantis. Thanks for watching. We're off to another destination. I'll see you next time. You guys gotta go to the Full Sushi Fair on Sunday. Yeah, we're gonna go. Okay. Yeah, that's gonna be sick. <laughs> <laughs> Are yeah. you guys gonna do that? Yeah. yeah. Paddle and all, man. Gotta go. <laughs> the Pele Keiko boys. Now they meet here at Waikiki Beach every Saturday at 11 a.m. in front of this statue. Get your phone. God, could that be any louder? I'm just trying to get my hands on that first thing. <laughs> get the most response. So one of the first times you go nude, you get stuck you doing it on camera. It, 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 <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Lucky I guess. About up there. <laughs>